welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you for being here. Thank you so much. Many of you are classroom teachers that are actually decided to come out here even though you don't even have to be at school yet. So thank you so much. We have people here today um, from California, from, um, from Minnesota, from Wisconsin, which I think is, is really, really cool because it contributes more to um, the diversity of ideas and experiences and things that you contribute here today. The goal of the Summer Institute for Climate Change Education is really first and foremost to build educators comfort and confidence with teaching climate change in the classroom. Show that it's interdisciplinary, it's nonpartisan, and really create this next generation of youth that really understand this issue and are educating their parents and that are growing up with a firm understanding of this issue and its implications and how they can be involved in solutions. All of us sitting here today, we probably all can agree that climate change is one of the biggest environmental threats that we're facing. And if you're not quite sure that you feel that way, well, hopefully this institute will uh, give you enough information and tools to realize that yes, indeed, that is the case. And our approach to the Will Steger Foundation is we recognize this is a huge problem and it takes both institutional changes and behavior changes at the individual and community level. Climate change is a really daunting subject for people to approach. And so having organizations like ours that are working specifically on um, not only why it's important to do this, um, but how getting to this basic idea that connecting students with the outdoors and with the environment um, and will grow concern for it. In 2004, I did an analysis that was based on what I perceived to be the gap between what was being said by the scientists I knew who were studying the question and how it was being um, reported in the mass media. So we invited Dr. Naomi Oreskes, a renowned climate historian, to come address why this climate misinformation persists, who are these people that are you know, really merchandising doubt and, and really are being paid to confuse us so that we do not act in the face of climate change. Yeah, I would say at this point the scientific consensus on the reality of global warming is as strong as the scientific consensus on tobacco was in the 1960s. And we knew that tobacco was harmful and the government took action against it in the 1960s. Now here we are 40 years later, nearly 50 years. It's the same story. We have a scientific consensus, but we have a lot of reluctance to do anything about it. I've always used a, a basic model in education, um, one that where you draw out the curiosity. The curiosity is basically the starting point, and once you have the curiosity, of course, uh, you apply the content. It's very important to work with educators because when we're working with educators, we're working with our children, and this is the, our children's issue. Uh, we have a, a real responsibility to educate our kids on what's going on on the climate. And with adults, we have this so-called debate going on, but uh, you know, we, we have to teach science. There isn't any more exciting times than right now because there's so many different things that are, are changing and going on. Observations that you can make now and then five years later, you can compare these, ob these various observations. I just want to stress that the word climate and the way we use it scientifically is a lot more complex than it used to be when it first started out uh, a couple of centuries ago. So I think the educational component uh, with respect to reaching young people through the Will Steger Foundation and the curriculum they're developing and things like that is wonderful because the younger we can reach people and make them see how important the environment is and what consequence it may have on their lives or is already having on their lives, I think the better judges they'll be, the better citizens they'll be in terms of engaging on this as they grow older and seeing to it that the state ends up making the right decisions about preserving its natural resources and doing the right things here. One of our core partners that has been there since the beginning has been the St. Paul Public Schools. When an educator owns that curriculum in a certain sense and has a passion and a feeling, a real understanding about it, uh, it changes the way they teach. When you have a passion for what you teach to a, to a child, the child's going to be enthused. If you are, there you go. I think the biggest challenges with educating people in regard to climate change are, are framing the message in such a way that we aren't using 
triggers that are closing doors before we've even started the discussion. So climate change and global warming have become very polarized terms. But if we talk about energy independence or energy savings or caring for the land and the water or caring for the future of our children or our health or balancing our economy and, and creating more resilient localized communities, those are kinds of language um, openers that can bring people into the conversation. And once you've developed some relationship based on um, language that doesn't trigger, you can move into those deeper underlying issues that are impacting it. And it, it's kind of dissolved that fear based on relationship again and moved into something that can move forward and actually come up with responses and solutions. Well, educators are crucial because they're the front line. I mean, school teachers, they're meeting with children every day. Those children go home and talk to their parents. What happens in school is hugely important. And, of course, teachers know how to teach. A lot of research scientists don't know how to teach, don't know how to communicate. So teachers whose job it is to teach, to communicate, who work with children, I mean, it's obviously crucial that they have good information and that we empower them. I've been, been working with, with Will and Nicole and Will Steger Foundation for several years now, and... It's just been one of the best relationships we've had. In fact, to be very honest, they sort of helped to push us into working into something that became Green Across America. The NEA is, the, um, is a national association with 3.2 million members. We primarily represent K-12 public school teachers, but also education support professionals, mm -hmm. um, retired members, higher ed faculty, and student educators. I'm all about the behavior change piece. Um, and I really think that this whole idea of figuring out how you apply what we know about climate data into the classroom and how it comes out in students that know, understand, care about, and actually do something um, about uh, climate change is really a powerful thing. Mostly I want, um, I want students to be able to think critically look at the data and make up their own minds and not be swayed by any particular person's spin on the data. What also is new is we developed a new partnership with the British Council and they uh, actually sponsored some educators from California to participate online and in person. So we're really excited to start identifying new partners that help us uh, reach new audiences. I teach history, I teach world history, and interestingly enough, I have incorporated climate change a lot into my curriculum, starting with um, the Industrial Revolution and how it impacted imperialism and us going across the globe and seeing how life has changed because of what we've done to our environment and the fact that things that people used to do we can't necessarily do anymore because the climate has continuously changed and it's an impacted just who we are as individuals. The challenge is to present it in a factual way and not a political way and to, to be able to present enough information that they can put the facts together and come to their own conclusions. Will Steger has been incorporating professional development and teacher training in all of his own uh, educational career path with his expeditions. Will Steger was the person who, above all others, brought us into the whole um, climate change and environmental movement. So for that, we're very, very grateful. What Will brings is seeing the pattern. He's showing us what we can't see by stepping outside here in Minnesota. He can show us from his experiences and the years of history of going to the Arctic that we can really observe those broken patterns. And once we see them, we respond to them because we are people who care. The role the Will Steger Foundation plays already, as I see it, is that um, enhanced educational opportunities, especially for our young people, to appreciate earth science in general, uh, climate and weather sciences specifically, and how these changes are important to things that they care about. The Will Steger Foundation and other foundations like that can play such a vital role in helping us as educators because they are the experts. They are the ones that can go out there and, and see and do and be those real life witnesses. Um, for our kids to be able to experience it through them. Teachers are incredibly important because they, they, you know, they ramify the effect, they reach so many more people than you or I could do individually. And then I think Will's work is incredibly important because seeing is believing for most people. And I think one of the big challenges about global warming is 
You can talk about the stratosphere until you're blue in the face, but most of us will never go to the stratosphere while we fly in airplanes. But, you know, we don't see the stratosphere, we don't breathe it, we don't feel it, we don't, you know, we don't feel global warming in our hearts. And a lot of that's because we don't see it. But the kind of work Will has done, the pictures that he's able to take in the Arctic that show the ice melting, you know, water where there used to be ice, the impacts on the biosphere, the people who live in the Arctic, the animals, I think all of that is incredibly important because it brings it home, it makes people understand this is happening, it's happening now, it's not just in the future. And even though the Arctic is far away, I think a lot of us intuitively grasp that the Arctic is important. It's been important historically, it's important for polar bears, it's important for biodiversity, it's important for the people who live there, and it's important symbolically. You know, there's a reason why explorers like Will, I mean, Will's part of a great tradition of explorers for whom the Arctic has been an important place for people to explore and live. Um, for a long, long time. So I think people intuitively grasp that the Arctic matters, even if it is far away and even if you and I will never get there.